who does charging for fittings serve more, consumers or the golf industry? Hello, everybody, and thanks for watching No Putts Given. This is episode number 97. I'm Miranda, and it might look a little different today. We've got Adam Beach, the owner and founder of My Golf Spy, along with Ryan Brath, representing TXG. Uh, you might have, if you've paid attention on Twitter, seen uh, this tweet that My Golf Spy put out last week. And, of course, TXG, a few days later, put out this tweet. So we figured... As we have a silent battle of the memes going, we take it off the streets, put these guys in the ring, let them duke it out. Adam, Ryan, welcome. You ready to go? Absolutely. Always. For sure. I don't know. I didn't bring any gloves, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's bare knuckle in here, man. We don't, we don't fight with gloves. <laughs> okay. Let's hit the ground running. So, Adam, why put out the tweet in the first place? Yeah, so I've been in the industry for over 20 years now, and... I think the industry has done a pretty poor job of growing the game. Uh, I think if it were we were to start it all over again, I think it could be done differently. You know, If the industry really was interested in growing the game, they would do fittings for free and give money back guarantees. I've been on both sides. So yes, I own my golf spy, but prior to that, I owned a fitting business and that's what we did for close to a decade. And I've also worked with retailers and gone in and done something exactly like that. Trial and error, charge for fittings or give for free and see what happens. And uh, it's interesting to see what happens. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I think, it, I think it brings more golfers in, gives more golfers opportunities to improve faster. And the quickest way to make a golfer for life is to have them hit the sweet spot faster, get that par quicker, and get that birdie on the scorecard as fast as they can. And I feel like you can do that by fitting more people. And I feel like if you put a sign on the front of the door that charges for fittings, uh, you limit the amount of people you can fit. You had to know when you put out that tweet, though, that somebody like Ryan at TXG was going to see it and respond. I mean, the only people that are complaining are those that charge for fittings um, in that tweet. So I get that. I get that the reactionary response from the business owners. They look and say, Hey, my golf spy says this, they might have some influence. We are a business that charges for fittings. I think our time is valuable. I think we should charge for those fittings. And I totally understand where they're coming from. And I've done both. I actually think they're leaving a lot of money on the table and not helping nearly as many golfers by putting that fitting fee on the door versus doing it for free. So I actually think they're doing themselves a disservice and not paying themselves as much as they can by actually charging at the door. It's kind of like the uh, bar that charges a, you know, an entry fee and you're not going to get as many people to walk through those doors. So. Okay. Ryan, you saw my golf spice tweet and responded. Why do you think it is advantageous to charge for fittings and how does it help the golfer? I think there's, there's a lot of different levels to this because the first is like what defines a fitting because from the beginner golfers perspective, I think that a lot of places, if we are talking the big box experience, and I can only, again, I can only speak for, for TXG, right? And what, what we offer, but from the big box experience, which I have worked for, that's where I started in the golf industry. If, if you want to exclude picking range balls and cleaning carts, the goal is to have people find something that's going to work well for them, because there is an inconsistency in a lot of players' golf games. And there's an expected level of service once you go to get a fitting and you are looking to pay for it. For us, for example, again, we charge and you know, if you want to talk about COVID or not, but we have a massive waiting list and a massive demand for our services because overall, if you look at the satisfaction of golfers who have gone through fittings and in a lot of cases, free fittings from say larger retailers or you know OEM demo days where there might be a lack of training for certain individuals that in some cases are seasonal employees, all of those things, it's hard to attract the, the knowledgeable people because they're either somewhere else or they're not in the golf industry. They were in it and then they left. And so we saw the tweet. We obviously were like, you know, we don't really believe that to be true because as I said earlier, there's the different levels of fitting. There's someone comes into a big box store. They're a new golfer. They try out some golf clubs. They're enjoying their, their let's say the person they're working with is completely competent. And they, they get a golf club where, you know, maybe they need a slight lie loft change or getting the right shaft 
weight within the right category. They're getting the right number of clubs. If it's a half set or whatever it happens to be, if it's a package set, well, that in theory is a fitting. And same with like, if you look at, uh, which I know a company you guys have talked about many times is Inesis. Like you go on their website, like you go on their website or you go into one of their stores from what I've seen. I've never actually been into one of their stores, but you see this different of like height, different grip size, different shaft flex for, you know, strong or whatever it happens to be. And then you end up with another product. Now that is a, a fitting per se, you're not with a customer, but they're basing, it's a self-fitting for the consumer there and they're getting good value from it. What you're looking at from the other side of things. And as you go up the ladder of cost or the level of experience, well, there is definitely needs to be a fee associated with that because of the time that goes into it. And if you look at like, say our demo, again, I'm using our example, like our demo matrix costs $75,000 a year. Like we have to pay for yeah, that. Yeah, but here's the, the thing, here's the thing, Ryan, you're arguing TXG as a business, okay? This isn't about TXG, it's not about my golf spot. This is about golfers and the consumer and growing the game, okay? You can keep charging, you know, you, that's your business model, okay? That is TXG related. What I'm saying is I was brought into a retailer to bring more people into the door at one point. And they said, how can we get more people to come in here and spend more money and help more golfers? So we did the fitting versus free fitting. The free fitting brought more people in. And if you're a competent fitter, it actually sold more equipment, okay? Led to happier golfers that shot lower scores that came back more often actually by getting the free fitting. They bought more stuff from that store. They came back for more fittings for more clubs, okay? So in the end, you're actually paying off that equipment that you just mentioned, that $75,000, way faster by offering free fittings. Now, to your point where you have a waiting list, once again, that's a TXG problem. That's not a golfer problem, right? So open up more stores, fit more people. And also, I look at it as the pyramid, right? What you're doing is serving the top of the pyramid. You're serving the people that are willing to pay for a fitting because it's also a weeding out system. You're saying, I feel like if you pay us $50, you're going to be more likely to pay for our person's time and you're probably more likely to buy equipment. The problem is that only serves the top of the pyramid and there's 25 million golfers, okay, in the rest of that pyramid. How many people do you fit a year? Do you know that number? I don't have the number off the top of my head. It's But if I'm if I'm coming from like an industry perspective, which if again, we're talking about all of the golfers in in the, you know, people who are playing golf, right? I've worked for OEMs. I've had those seasonal positions and, you know, lucky for those OEMs that I've worked for, I was always an extremely competent fitter. I was very knowledgeable. I would choose, chose the opportunity to self-educate and th they call it the golf business because it's a business. They're making money to, to sell golf clubs and, or golf balls or whatever it happens to be. And, you know, you can make the argument for cost of players or marketing, whatever that happens to be. That's the industry. They, you can't change that side of the industry. But what we are trying to do, again, if I'm speaking from the OEM perspective, you have these, like a number of fitters that go into it. And if they have free fitting days or they have, and they are, they do offer a lot of these free fitting days. And why do they, why do they do that? To sell equipment. Bingo. First off, <laughs> but also to serve as players because they- They wouldn't be doing those free fittings if they didn't sell equipment, first of all. Because if they went around those Titleist vans, Callaway vans, traveled around the country clubs and they gave those free fittings and no one was buying equipment, they would stop doing free fittings. The reason this, this is arguing my point, if you gave free fittings, you would offer more golfers the opportunity to be fit, which is a good thing. And I hear your argument is constantly about the OEM and the TXGs. I'm, talk, I'm worried about the golfer, right? So how do we get more of those golfers fit? Well, you eliminate some of those golfers by putting a $50 sign in your door per fitting or whatever you charge. Yes, there are going to be people that are less talented at golf, 24, 30 handicappers, and you might not want to fit those people. But everybody started out as a 30 handicapper at some point, and we all got better and that we can get better faster. So for example, if I can make you better at a sport, whether it be baseball, football, golf, or anything quicker, you're going to enjoy that sport more play it more often, right? That's my goal is to get more people that are coming into the game, playing better and enjoying it more. And I don't think that's possible. I actually, I know it's not possible if you charge, but I actually think you as a business and the other businesses can make more money selling more equipment if you're competent at fitting by actually bringing more people indoors. It's just common sense. So Adam, it sounds to me like you're arguing, arguing the Costco rotisserie chicken argument. 
That's their lost leader. They're getting people in the door. I'm arguing this. Take TXG and split them as a clone store or whatever store. It doesn't matter. Whatever the name of the store is, okay? And you put on the front of that door $50 for fittings and you put one that says free fittings on the door. Which one is going to have more people walking in it? You're sitting there telling me, well, it's, I've got to get my time, m money for my time, which I, I hear you, right? And our equipment is really expensive. I've done this exact trial at a retail store. More people walk in, more people walk around. They buy balls, they buy tees, they buy clubs. They also walk out happier, in my opinion. And here's why. When somebody pays $50 for a fitting, there is an inherent expectation immediately when they spend that money that you better know your shit and you better fit me and improve on what I own. And a competent fitter can definitively do that almost 100% of the time if you look at the totality of a bag, all 14 clubs, driver to putter, and ball. But if that person doesn't pay for a fitting, one, their expectations are lower. They're also less intimidated to take that fitting. But more than anything, they're so satisfied and happy and grateful for you helping them. They're a lifetime customer. They don't buy one $1,200 driver from you. They keep coming back year after year because they are more satisfied. So not only short term are they happier, but long term, they're a longer term customer. So that equipment gets paid off faster. More golfers get fit. It, it just works better for everybody. So my question would be like your experience, like what, when was that in the golf industry? Because I can tell you like my, from my big box experience, which would have been pre-2008. So golf retail, golf big box was booming. And this was, which sounds like makes me sound really old, but it was very much pre internet buying or the, the infancy of internet shopping or the Amazonification of everything, which has obviously happened a lot more recently. If golfers want that experience of going into a store and trying equipment, and I've heard you guys talk about this actually in, in other shows that you've had from no putts given of retailers charging for just people to come in and demo and things like that. And you no, know, that's one thing from the big box retailer, because it is, you know, their model is to be more, um, more efficient or more convenient to the player. But the other side of that is, you no, know, I've got 10 fingers and 10 toes, thank goodness, even though I built golf clubs for 10 years or 15 years, whatever it happens to be. So that's a good thing. How many times I had spent a lot of time with a consumer in a big box store or outside of it and set them up with everything and they go, thank you. And then two weeks later, they show up with that driver to be regripped for me, even though they that, didn't buy That's once me. again, that's a you problem. So as a business owner, here's how I solved that with the other trial retailer. We put a sign on the door, free fittings, you bring your clubs and we'll beat them. If we don't beat one of your 14 clubs in your bag, you get a free, a free uh, sleeve of balls, okay? The chances, like I said, of a competent fitter coming in and fitting you for a complete bag to try to find something you beat that you can beat of their bag. Make them bring their bag, try to beat their driver, their irons, their wedge, their putter, their ball. You're going to be able to beat something out of that bag. When you do, they're more likely to buy, first of all. And secondarily, they're more likely to buy from you if you treat them like that, where you make it a customer service thing. You also offer a money back kind of, we'll give you a sleeve of balls if we don't. Once again, that's a business problem. If they're leaving your business and going and buying that club from somewhere else, okay? How do you solve that as a business? Once again, this isn't a TXG thing for me. This is a how do I make more golfers happy? How do I grow the game? I look at it like this. If I went back into the retail custom fitting business, I'm happy to set up shop right beside somebody that charges. Keep charging. I'm going to come in and blow the doors off you because I'm going to do free fittings and I'm going to outsell you and out happy golfers. That's the way I look at it. You know, I think it's pretty simple. Some of what I heard Ryan say was, and I'm paraphrasing, that charging for a fitting means you get a more qualified fitter. Did I hear that correctly, Ryan? Over, over the long term in the golf industry, and this is something that, that we personally stand for and we see within the entire industry, which I kind of touched on earlier, is that in the past, consumers don't believe in fittings. Now, it doesn't mean that there weren't qualified fitters in the past, but there was a lot of people that were just kind of, from the consumer level, didn't think it worked because it was, oh, I got this, it didn't work very well. But, you know, it's the same as if you buy, I can buy a gym membership and go to the gym like twice a week. But if I also eat two cartons of ice cream every week, I'm not going to get any, like, I'm not going to change the way I appear. Now, sure, the net result is, you know, I still put the work in and I get to eat the ice cream, but I'm not seeing an improvement. So you can, you can offer as much as you want and you can say that someone's going to see improvement and you can get that with equipment. But there is this 
inherent ability for the golfer to actually get better. Now, if we're, again, we're talking about the entire like, group of those 25 million golfers, you know, and you guys use this yourself. You use the suit analogy of the thousand dollar suit. So I'm going to get to that in a second. But if you go to those, those 25 million golfers, but you've got, let's say 5 million serious golfers. I don't know the actual number. Maybe I should, but you know, we're talking 20% of those golfers are actually very serious. We could make more of them more serious golfers if we fit them into proper equipment quicker. I don't necessarily think that because I know that I have a lot of friends that, that play recreationally and I help them with equipment if they ask questions, but they don't feel comp. They don't feel confident walking into a store. So many of them feel intimidated to walk into a store. They don't even think their game is good enough to go into a store and get fit period, you know? And that's just not true. I know that being in this as long as I have that even, you know, having a fitting facility like we do here behind us, even my friends will be intimidated to come here because they're like, oh, I'm not good enough. That's just not true, right? But if you gave them the time, put them in a better ball that they hit it longer, a driver that hit it longer and straighter, a putter that got the ball in the hole quicker, there's just no chance that they don't enjoy golf more. I mean, there's plenty of data around people that have better fit equipment, shoot lower scores and enjoy golf more. So I will finish my point now. And that is the idea that, you know, I, again, when I go to a golf course, I play a lot of municipal golf courses, a lot of local golf courses that aren't expensive. And I can tell you right now that a lot of those people, they're not there because they're there to enjoy the game, but the game is, is truly secondary to the experience of being out with their friends and having some fun playing the game. And with that in mind, a lot of those customers are a not buying new equipment. They're not updating their equipment that often, which is fine. But the idea that they want to shoot the lowest scores, they don't really care. Like they don't see that. But would those customers pay $50 for fitting? In that case, like those, that's a huge amount of um, people of the, in the golf industry that are just not going to do it. So to use the suit analogy, right? That's a large assumption to think that those people are all out there. I think there's, you're correct. I think there's a large portion that could care less about what equipment's in their bag. But I think there is also a large subset of those golfers that you think don't care would love to be fit for equipment if they felt comfortable and confident to walk into a place that was free. And put it to you like this, Ryan, do you think there's enough competent fitters in this country to fit the golfers that would love to be fit? It's as simple as that. Uh, again, if you, if you have to think about what, is the, what, what defines a fitting. Anything that improves on what they currently own in their bag. I think there's enough people out there. You think if there's we're enough just talking, competent fitters to fit those people looking for those better equipment pieces? If someone's willing to, to travel, if someone's willing, <laughs> dude, yes, but that's the thing. It's like a dentist or a, a someone who goes to see an eye doctor. So let me let me use your suit analogy, right? You're talking about if someone gets a thousand dollar suit, they're going to get fit for that thousand dollar suit. Of course they are. And I use this when it comes to club fitting, right? I use this analogy because if when I when I got a suit, when I got married, I got a custom fit suit. I was introduced to the tailor through a, through a family friend and it was close to a thousand dollars for this custom fit suit. But what they didn't give me do my, are my measurements to go somewhere else to buy the suit because I am paying for that person's time. I'm not talking about suit businesses. I was just a simple analogy. I look at it like this. There's public and private schools. Okay. If there wasn't public education in the United States, there would be a hell of a lot of uneducated people walking around the streets. I look at the current system of how people are fit for golf equipment as a private system only. I don't think there are enough public institutions. You don't walk into a Dick Sporting Goods. I don't remember the last time I walked into a Dick Sporting Goods and seen a single person even standing in the golf facility to the golf area. There should be somebody standing. If it's my business and I want to do the best job of selling equipment and helping people that walk through the door, I would have an attendant sitting right at the front of that door saying, hey, excuse me, sir, are you a golfer? Yeah, I am. Come over here. Go get your clubs. I'm going to try to improve on what you own. And I guarantee you, you would have a hell of a lot happier golfers. And there would be kind of a, you're the private system of the schooling system for me. TXG is. I think there's just not enough public entities in golf to supply the, the, the demand for golfers that want to improve in this game. I just, and especially with the explosion from COVID and the new amount of golfers coming in, there's more demand than there is supply of fitters. Now, if we, if we are talking about the, you know, the demand for fitting or what people are looking for in a fitting, to, to your point, but something that we believe in as well, and I believe in from the, the uh, whole industry, I'm not talking about myself here, is in the past, there was a lot of people that were probably in it, but weren't very well educated for a number of reasons. 
right? Now, for us, and I think for a lot of places, the education side of club fitting is becoming a lot better. Now, speaking to us, we believe that we are demonstrating what a professional fitting, what an actual club fitting should look like when someone's looking to truly optimize. And from that perspective, in the future, because there is a massive retention issue within the golf business of talented people, right? When you said earlier, from like a money perspective, private private versus public, why do people always complain about government, whether it be local or wherever, state, whatever, it doesn't matter. For us, it's you know provincial. Why do people complain about that? Because a lot of the, the truly like highly educated people or the people that are looking to make more money go into the private sector because they're going to make more money because there's already a cap on what's available. Once again, that's an industry problem. That's, that's not what I care about. I care about the golfer. So the industry needs to figure that out then to attract more talented people to fit more so golfers. So I'm getting to that. You can't retain talented people without paying them a reasonable wage. Agreed. Right. And a lot of these, a lot of these seasonal positions, regardless of where they are, because golf is very much a seasonal sport because they're seasonal positions. I'm not saying they're paying minimum wage, but they're not paying what other people are going you're to argue, get. And you're arguing that, my case, Ryan. I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing that that is an issue. But once again, I'm trying to say that if we started all this over and we were trying to meet the demand of how many golfers there were out there and could improve on all of them if possible, and we had to sit around and you were a part of this group and we sat around to try to solve this problem. How do we do this? Yeah, of course, you'd have to have more, t- you'd have to have more people that were fitting people. They would have to be educated on how to do that properly. TXG is probably one of the best in the business of that. That's not even an argument, okay? But man, just think if we had 500 TXGs, okay? If we were able to do that, wouldn't that be better for the golf industry? Of course. Well, of course it would. There you go. The other that end- is my argument. Yes, but again, like we we would we still believe in the charging for the the level because experience, like when you think about TFC, people come into our facility knowing that there's an expectation of of service before and after. And then if we talk about improvement, like what is measurable improvement? Data costs money. Data collection costs money. You pay for, if you want Arcos, you pay for Arcos. They're not giving that away for free. You want that data. There are there are free options. You're not getting the same level of information. It's a totally different because, business model. You're arguing something completely different. That's, you know, the subscription but model. From a fitting perspective, we can look at someone's handicap and watch it drop as they Ryan, get I've fit. seen it done. I owned a f- custom fitting business prior to my golf supply. I've also consulted with companies that do this exact thing I'm talking about. All I'm trying to say is keep charging. That is your choice. And you can sit here and all you, the comeback is always going to be there is time invested. So we need to get money for what our time invested is and the equipment and all that stuff. I hear you. I understand that argument. All I'm saying is the alternative to that is actually going to make you more money and fit more golfers. So we can keep beating a dead horse on, well, we're going to charge because we've got to buy all this equipment. We've got all these talented people. We've got to power pay this high salary to get more talented people, which I totally agree. All I'm trying to say is, in my opinion, based on my career and doing this, you can fit more golfers by offering it for free. You, as a business, make more money by selling more equipment, and you have happier long-term customers. It's, that's what I've seen in my experience. And again, so I, I understand that. But you also have to realize that there, is, there has to be, a, a, in many cases, you could call it the private system side of this thing. And this, this is not us. This is everybody. The people that want to get fit, like the people that are very serious about getting fit. So we were, talking, we were starting to talk about the top of the pyramid there is only a small number of educated fitters versus the golfers if we're using that, right? Well, how do we attract more people to stay in the business? Well, you have to pay them. But you're not right? hearing me. You can pay them more if you fit more golfers, correct? And sell more equipment, correct? But there is only a capacity of so many people per day and they have to be able to qualify that. That's a TXG business problem once again. I'm arguing for the golfer, not for the business. I, that's an industry problem. That's a full industry totally problem. Agree. That's not an us problem. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I said, if the industry really wanted to do this, they would have to figure it out, but it would fit more golfers. More golfers are going to be happy. And if they could do it free, you would sell more equipment. That is completely an industry problem. Totally agree. Now, if we were to use, using your own numbers here, all right, let's, let's, you go, you guys did an iron fitting satisfaction survey. I'm glad you read it. All right. Appreciate it. Yes. 
I read a lot of your stuff. I like what you guys do. I'm not, I'm not here to argue what you guys do. I love what you guys do. About your own survey example, again, <laughs> reaching out to a number of golfers. This is your data from your website talking to your readers. Although we fit a very small number of the people that were sur- surveyed who actually got fit at TXG, we qualified for that survey. We finished 20% higher in satisfaction than any other company and we charge. And you know what? Some of those other companies on that list charge money for their fittings. Exactly. So what does the charging have to do with satisfaction if one charges and has shitty service and one charges and has great service? They don't matter. They both charged and they both gave totally different experiences. The charging has nothing to do with the full, the end experience. It does if you're paying for knowledge. And knowledge, knowledge should not be free and education is not free. Club Champion had some of the worst experiences from that survey. Are you saying they don't have knowledgeable people there? Or are you saying they don't charge? I can't speak to their, like their experience. I've never gone to their experience. They had terrible experiences. So what's the, what, what are you arguing that? Because you charge, you get a better experience? Because obviously that's not the case. This isn't about a survey we did or anything. It comes down to a simple question. What is best for the consumer or what is best for your business? But it is the golf business. That's the thing. Like that's, a, that's what you, we have to understand that the people are here to service people through a business. We can talk about any number of things, but if we're talking, like, let's get out of, let's, if we use golf or whatever it happens to be, I'm wearing a pair of glasses right now. Now, even in Canada, we have healthcare. I have to go and pay for my glasses. Now I could walk around and I could struggle squinting at my computer screen. But do they charge you to fit the glasses to your face or are you only paying for the glasses? No, I, I, pay, I pay to see my optometrist and I, and I also pay to get my prescription. I just went and got one for free and I just got a brand new pair of glasses because I'm old as hell now and I didn't pay for my fitting. Walk in, free fitting. Okay. But what, what, what was the facility? How many, how many options did they offer? Like what was, the, what was the level that you were getting, right? Like that's, that's the biggest thing for me is like for any professional service. But you're, you're making the assumption that because you charge, you're going to get a better service or you have to get money to get a better service. Let's say you take you, Ryan, and let's say you're the fitter or Ian, Okay. Ian is the person in the bay fitting the person. Is he going to give a worse experience to the person that walked in for free versus $50? Or is he going to give the same experience to that person? Well, it's the same experience, but if we're talking about an individual, right? Like people's time is worth money. And I'm saying you're going to make more money by having more people walk in the door. It's math. But if someone's time is in demand, you have to be able to weed out being able to charge for that. Oh, there we go. There, There you go. Now you're getting to another argument. The $50 is a weeding out system, which is another entitled bullshit thing that the industry does. Like it's a way to go, hey, if if you're gonna be worth my time, you gotta pay $50 to walk in the door, okay? Because and then I know I have weeded you out, as you said, because you're a more serious customer. That's the exact problem I'm arguing against. But I don't believe you there's have to anything be a wrong serious with that. golfer. I don't believe there's anything wrong with that. Because if we look at now. There's a level of education within the industry. And this comes back to the, the past, present, and future of the fact that for the longest time, there wasn't. I think the industry is working better towards it. And if you want to keep people that are educated, you got to pay for those people. And that's why- And you why, can pay them more if you fit more people and sell more equipment. Not if there's only so much time in the day. You have to be able to know. Then hire, pe- hire more people. So then, Ryan, are you saying that because there is only so much time in the day, you only want the Mercedes level of customer That's exactly they're what they're willing saying. to pay? No, not, not at all. Because the biggest thing that, that we do, and, and I think any, any qualified fitter that's coming in is that what you are getting out of it at the end is if you come in and you come in with a golf club that we can't beat, then we tell you, it's like, we can't beat this. What, do you want to look at something else in your golf bag? And I think any, any qualified fitter that is actually trying to offer a service is going to do that properly. Now, there's a great saying, right? If you're not paying for a service, then you are not, like, you're not the customer, right? And so, like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all of those things are free because we are getting sold to advertisers for information. If you come in, you are getting sold to as a consumer. Whereas if you are paying for a service, you know that the reciprocal is already there as far as the relationship is concerned, that no, I paid for your time and now you're going to help me with what I'm trying to get out of that, right? And that to me is, is the crux of why a lot of people, when they go for a fitting and they don't pay for them, they are unsatisfied 
Now it could be based on skill level or any number of things from that individual player. But if you pay for that gym membership and you go eat ice cream, you're still paying for the gym membership. I, I hate the gym. Well, I hate going to the gym. Adam, what Ryan is saying is that if you go for a free fitting, you are therefore not the customer. So the OEM's manufacturers are likely the customer trying to push fitters to promote their products. So then fitters are then influenced. Am, am I correct in interpreting what you're saying, Ryan? In many ways, yes, because we want, we I believe that if you are paying for something from an unbiased, like if you go to mechanic, I drive around an 11 year old car at this point, actually 12 year old car at this point. If there's an issue with that car, I go to someone who's going to offer me a service. Now I had a problem with my car one time. I drove to a mechanic. There was there was no they were not busy at the time. I said there's a rattle underneath. I think something's going on. You know, it's like saying I I'm I'm slicing my driver or whatever, right? You could you could draw comparisons. And he says, okay, well, let me put it on the lift and I'll check it. And he goes, you know, one thing was loose. I put a metal zip tie in. It was just like a pan thing. It was vibrating. It's not a big deal. Just go ahead. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not leaving without paying you because your time, I believe that your time and your equipment is worth money. Now that's fine that they can offer that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I know that they did that because like he was just being helpful, but I also know that like, I don't want him to leave because he is a professional and that is his tools. Those are his things. A club fitter. Now you can talk again, we can talk about the industry, you can talk about OEMs. And that's one thing because their margins from a fitting side of things are very different from a, the public versus private side of the, the business. But if anybody wants to offer professional service and you want that professional service, and there is a demand for that professional service, which I think a lot of independent fitters have shown that there is a massive demand from golfers. Well, then how do we fill those roles with, with educated people? And how does, for, how does titles do it when they drive around in a van and fit people at country clubs when they do the fittings for free? But Titleist isn't paying Titleist for the equipment. Titleist is buying directly from them, right? And they pay those what you, fittings. What do you mean? No, they, they drive around, they give fittings for free. Why do they do that? That person that bought that club isn't going, man, thank you for your time. Here's a hundred. You know, they're going, thanks for the fitting. If I found a better club, I might be interested in buying the titles club. If, if I'm not interested, I walk off. It works for a lot of part of the industry. And in my opinion, and my experience, I, you keep arguing business versus consumer to me. And I understand that at the end of the day, you have to make money, right? As a business to help the consumer. I just have seen once again, in my experience that you make more money and you sell more equipment by having more of those people walk through the door. TXG has a supply and demand issue. They have a three, what, um, you know, a waiting list of what? Like I heard three months or something. I don't remember. It depends on what the fitting is for, of course. Like we try okay. to get people in as quickly as possible. But That's TXG. But like I said, just think if you had infinite amount of time and people to fit all those people, that would be incredible to fit more golfers. That is the goal. I think more golfers want to get fit than there are time slots to be fit by talented people in this industry. And that's not a TXG problem. I think TXG has done a phenomenal job of putting together an educated staff that knows their stuff and knows how to help people and does, from what I've heard, customer service really well. So I've got no argument about TXG. I just wish there were a hell of a lot more type of TXGs with more educated people like you guys have to fit more golfers. And that's and what we want too. That's what we want so too. That's the complete argument. But we pay, like, we, we think we have some of the highest paid fitters. In the industry. And the reason we pay for that talent is to keep them. You might not believe it, but if you did a trial at a store, you might see the same thing that I saw. Offer free fittings, you're going to actually be able to pay your workers more money because you sold more equipment and you have a higher lifetime value for each customer staying a customer for life and buying more stuff other than just fittings from you. You can argue against it and keep that business model. I just think you're leaving money on the table and golfers fit out on the golf course not being fit properly by charging at the door versus allowing more people in. You guys don't have the capability or capacity or bandwidth right now to do that. I totally get that. So one way to weed that amount of people coming in out is to charge at the door. I understand that. But that is a TXG business model problem. They can't expand that quickly. Once again, you're arguing business versus the consumer, and I'm arguing purely for the golfer. I have one question. You guys own... A, a fitting service, right? For a driver? Correct. Yep. Do you, do you give it away for free or do you charge for it? It's a great question. So as a test and trial, we try to charge for it. Next year, it will be free. Okay. And here's why. One, the test for $9 was 10 years of data that no one had, right? 
So we used to do it for free in the beginning, and then we charged $9. For free, we fit 10x of the people we did at $9 as a trial and a test. The other thing that happened was the expectation at $9 for only $9 was so high that the emails that came in customer service-wise were so polarizingly different between the people they got fit for free and the expectation they had at $9 that next year we're going to fit a lot more people because when we come out with our new website, True Golf Fit will be free for drivers, irons, putters, balls, shoes, everything. Okay. I was curious. I was, because again, that data that you off had, right? And the level of expectation, but there's a lot of variables. So if we talk about how, you know, you talk about the knowledge, right? Of, of any fitter, any fitter, the decision tree that goes into creating, say, artificial intelligence to help fit somebody, right? Is it perfect because you don't have launch monitor data for somebody? It's not perfect. Right, but what are we arguing now? Is my, is true golf fit a better fitting than? No, 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 no. That's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm I'm just saying like, but you you charge for that because you had all that data, right? No, we gave we gave it away for free for sixty thousand golfers. We tried it at nine dollars as a test, and I think have fit twelve thousand golfers at that. Once again, it was a test to see what what would actually happen, and next year it will be free, and it will permanently be free from the from this point forward. Okay, and once again, that proved my point. We can fit more golfers for free, and they were much happier when they got it for free. And they okay. also bought more equipment when it was free. So once again, check, check, check. Okay, cool. What was the next question? I want to boil this back down. Let's look back at the language of the tweets that each side put out. And Ryan, I want to kind of narrow in on yours because TXG said fitting should never be free. I want to think, what is the message that you're sending to consumers with that language? Fitting should never be free. I think that there are, there are a number of people that could offer fittings for free that have good level of knowledge, good understanding of, of what's going to work for individuals. But the idea of a professional fitting that someone who goes through the time to truly optimize what you're trying to do and build a relationship with the consumer, because... I think for a lot of people, if you don't pay for something, there's there's not a lot of follow up after the fact, right? It's like okay, I got it for free, and then that's that's fine, right? But when there is a a payment made, a transaction between two people, the end result is, I think, to be honest, a longer term. I respect what you do, and I respect your time as the consumer, but also as as any business is concerned. At the end of it, we're also trying to long-term help you play better golf because golf is a game that you can play for a very long time. And when you factor in that, when you are paying, you know, we need free adjustments, let's do those adjustments. Let's get those taken care of. Because in a lot of times, like you're going to pay for those extra after the fact anyways, if you, you know, if you've got a free fitting or whatever it happens to be, you're going to go somewhere else. For us, I believe that from a professional standpoint to go through an agnostic fitting, because you know, and Jen, you guys say all yourself, like you are not being paid by any brand. So why should you be forced to use any brand? And if you yeah, go so to- Adam, a, I, I don't know that you ever answered that question. Do you think if you're not paying for a fitting, you lose the brand agnostic nature of it because fitters or human beings can be influenced by commissions and whatnot? In many cases, yes. Because a lot of places that aren't, are not agnostic are individual, like individually brand focused. Now, a consumer can choose to go one way or the other, but if you want to try all of those things and you want that experience of getting a fitting that is going to allow you to try everything and go through I mean, that you're process. You're arguing so much for me right now because that is the problem. Those are all the problems. And I'm saying those are, we got a lot of problems, right? And it doesn't have to be that way. First to your thing, you said if you charge, you can follow up with the customer. No one's telling you that if you don't charge up front, you can't follow up with the customer, first of all. Second of all, you're correct. If you don't charge and you get it free, a lot of those places are incentivized or single brand fitting places. So you're not getting a truly agnostic situ you know, scenario. Once again, that's a industry problem. And I'm saying we have an industry problem and I would like to fix it. And I want it to be the scales to be balanced more for the consumer than for the businesses. Right, right now, I think the businesses are putting their profits first over helping the consumer. To talk to that point, right? It's the, how do we continue to have educated people in the business as a whole? If you want to say like, okay, we're talking equipment here, but if we want golfers to also improve, like we should offer lessons. There's not a teacher out there in the world that's offering lessons. Well, that's, 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 that has to start at the college, you know, 
level of attracting people into colleges for PGM programs and things like that. The other, you know, that's a bigger problem, right? You're right. We don't have enough talented people. Once again, we have a problem. And I think part of that problem is there's a lot of golfers out there wanting to get better and not enough people out there knowing how the hell to tell them to get better. So that's And if you want to exactly attract those, that talent, you got to pay for it. And that event that does, you know, it falls on the Ryan, I'll, I mean, I'm going to keep telling you. And I would love for THG to do a side-by-side analysis. You're going to make more money, in my experience, by giving free fittings in the long run than by charging for fittings up front. And yes, I'm not telling you to do that, but I'm just saying, go try it for a year. We're going to try it next year at True Golf Fit. THG, try it for a year and see what happens. Well, we won't be doing that, but <laughs> we appreciate the suggestion. Let's wrap this up. I want to boil it down to a very simple question. Um, let's see, Ryan, why don't we let you go first? Who does charging for fitting serve more consumers or the golf industry? I think 100% it, it fits the consumer. It, it helps the consumer. And the reason is you are paying for information. So you can choose to buy, you, you give the opportunity to, to make an informed decision by paying for information that you would not otherwise necessarily get because of the equipment that might be involved in it. And yes, you can say that you know, OEMs and those companies should all give those things away for free, but they don't. And you could talk about the industry has a broken model, which I don't really necessarily believe that it does because everyone is trying to have families and feed kids and, and have houses and all of those things. And that's, you know, that exists. So when you pay for something, you're paying for information. And now once you have that information as the consumer, you are completely empowered to make that decision under a no pressure environment when you pay for a fitting. And that's what that's where our belief stands. Because if you come in and you pay for it, you get the service, you understand what you have and what could be better. You also know where what those scenarios could be as far as how much it may or may not cost for the, the certain pieces of equipment that will help improve your game. But it still comes down to the consumer having the option to do that. And there's the no pressure that's there again, empowers the consumer. Devil's advocate. Okay. Is it no pressure? Because you have paid $50, so you do have an expectation that you're going to come away a better golfer, even if it's minute or minuscule, because you have paid for a service. What if they go to the course and they still suck? Is it no pressure then? Because they have given you money and you render them a service, but the pressure's still there. But do you mean like they've already gotten their equipment or no? Like, cause, because I'm just saying like, if you come in, I'm just talking about the service level of the fitting. If you come in and get a fitting, you have the information and now you can choose to do with it what you want to do with it. And to me, that, that empowers the consumer to say, I paid for something. I've gotten the information that I wanted, which I don't believe should necessarily be, be free if I'm looking to use a brand agnostic approach. And at the end of the day, they can make that better decision versus if it's free, you know, maybe I feel like there's some type of agenda of trying to sell me something or, you know, they're not comparing products or all of those things. So. Okay. Adam, same question to you. Who does charging for fitting serve more consumers or the golf industry? I think, you know, the businesses like TXG and things like that club champion true spec serve the tippy tippy top of the pyramid. You know, I've spent my entire career talking to the whole pyramid and not the tippy top of it. And when you do focus group studies that we do that we don't even publish behind the scenes and you listen to the totality of that 25 million people, they are underserved. And, you know, there's not a question in my mind that the businesses are out for, they put profits over the people, period, you know, and they have forever and they don't, they don't really care about making the golfer better. I'm not saying all of them. I think TXG cares about making the golfers that walk through their door better, but there are so many out there roaming around the, the ether of the golf world that are wandering aimlessly without a clue of what they should be doing. There's just not enough people to serve them. All right. Anything either of you want to add before I let you go? No, I think, um, it, was, I, I think it was a good discussion. Like I, I think I state my point from the idea of people get what they pay for. And I, I, I truly believe that at the end of the day that that services the, the customer better than something that is free. I mean, my objective for any of this, Miranda, isn't about a TXG or a My Golf Spy or anything, right? Part of the purpose of My Golf Spy is to start conversations that are here and get them, even if it's one step forward, right? I think that's beneficial in having people like TXG in these conversations, which can get heated, right? Uh, but there's nothing personal about this from 
my end, and I doubt Ryan's either, but really it is a conversation starter that not a lot of people are willing to have in this industry. And I do think that these kind of conversations can move things forward. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, the message that we preach all the time is still very clear. It is very important to be fit, whether it's for your clubs, your ball, or any of your other equipment. Get fit. And, you know, yeah. we're always open to suggestions about where to go and how to do it and how much you pay for it. This, you know, to achieve our objectives are different. You know, TXG's objective is different than ours. Ours is consumer first, right? And we give everything away for free other than True Golf Fit up into next year, right? But all of our content is free. They have a business and that's their philosophy. And I understand that. And it's also a differentiator for them to charge for fittings and their time. And um, not here to bash their business model. I wasn't even thinking about THC when this tweet went out. I'm thinking about the totality <laughs> of my career and seeing what I've seen from both sides. And I don't think we're solving the problem right now by charging for fittings. All right. Well, Ryan, thank you very much for stepping in the ring and taking the battle off of Twitter and putting it on No Putts Given. We appreciate it. And thank you for doing all of the quality fittings that you do. Thanks for having me again. It's, you know, we, our goal is to educate the golfer. That's why we, we give away all of our content for free on YouTube to, is to educate people, to help them understand and see what is involved with the fitting, which I know I mentioned off the top. And you know, we'll continue to share that on our platforms. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next time if there's another meme battle, okay? <laughs> all right. All see right. you later, Ryan. Take care. Thank you. I mean, for that kind of stuff. But when it comes to a ball fitting uh, in person, uh, it was a completely different experience. Kind of an eye opening because you got to see data firsthand from just hitting shot to shot. I saw a huge difference in what I was.